Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to walk you through a topic that's showing up on many cybersecurity certification exams, the Risk Management Framework published by the National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST. I'll tell you why the framework exists, how you can use it, and then explain the seven steps in the NIST risk management process. Now, risk management is a complex topic, and fortunately, organizations don't need to design their own risk management processes from the ground up. Risk management frameworks provide proven, time-tested techniques for performing enterprise risk management. One of the most widely used risk management frameworks was developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, a U.S. federal government agency. Their process is mandatory for many government computer systems, but private organizations have also widely adopted this framework because they find it to be a helpful approach. The details of the framework are found in NIST Special Publication 800-37. This document runs over 60 pages and it includes a lot of detail on the framework that's great reading for anyone who's involved in risk management. That publication is available for free on NIST's website. Now, before beginning the risk management process, an organization should gather information from two different categories. The first set of information is about the technology architecture, and it includes reference models, technical details, business process information, and information system boundaries. The second input to the process is organization-specific information, including the laws, regulations, and policies that apply, the strategy of the organization, its priorities, resource availability, and supply chain information. We can then take all of this information that we gather during our preparation and then begin the six-step NIST risk management process. Now, before I explain the six steps of that process, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos when they come out. Okay, back to the risk management process. After gathering information about the technology architecture and the organization itself, the process enters step one, where we categorize the information system being assessed, as well as the information that's stored, processed, and transmitted by that system. We normally do this by performing an impact assessment. Then we move on to step two, where the organization selects the security controls that should be used to manage the risks to the information system. Now, this selection is based upon the system's categorization from step one. We're going to likely begin with a standard baseline of controls and then add or subtract specific controls to tailor the specification to the system's needs. After we do that selection, we can move on to step three, where we actually implement those selected controls. In step four, we perform a control assessment to determine whether the controls were correctly implemented operate correctly, and meet security requirements. After we finish that assessment, we then enter step five, where we authorize operation of the information system. In the federal government, authorization is a very formal process where a senior government official must accept any remaining risks. Then once the system is authorized and running, we can move on to step six of the process, where we monitor the security controls on an ongoing basis to ensure their continued effectiveness and make sure we respond to any environmental changes. If this monitoring detects significant issues, the cycle can begin again. This risk management framework helps provide some structure for the way an organization approaches making decisions about risk. In practice, you'll want to adapt these steps to meet the needs of your own organization. I hope that this video helped you understand the NIST risk management framework. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.